fast to the perfection of your faith and not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Satan wants to make sure you never get this word. Satan is scared of this word. He has problems with this word. Satan don't mind you going to a church. He has problems with you going to a word church. Stand up and be the person that God called you to be. Not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to read the foundational text, do a brief review. Then we're going to dive into today's stuff, which I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Good to see you, man of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to begin reading in verse 17. It reads like this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation to it, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory to God. That's us. We have been made the righteousness of God in him. And as a result of us being the righteousness of God in him, we get the privilege to be able to live this life that can only be lived in him. We are people who are made righteous. We were already found out that word made means to become, which means we were not that, but we are now that as a result of us of what Jesus Christ did for me and you when he allowed himself to become sin for me and you so that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No other way could we could do that and ever become that other than what he did for us. Well, we are that. Praise God. So we ought to live like that. He went to the cross as our propitiation, as our substitute. Praise God for me and you. He didn't only pay price, the sin of price, the sin, the price sin. <laughs> he didn't only pay the price of sin. Sometimes you got to spit it out. Praise God. We didn't, he didn't only pay the price of sin for me and you. He also went as a substitute for me and you. He substituted for us. He took our place. We took his place. He gave us his stuff and he took our stuff. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Because when he went to the cross for me and you, he took upon our sinfulness and he gave us his sinlessness. He took upon our separation with God and he gave us a reconnection back to God. He took upon our being alienated from God and apart from God and gave us our sonship, gave us a sonship, his sonship that he had. He took upon our poverty. He gave us his wealth. He took upon our sickness. He gave us his health. He took upon our old tired, jacked up lifestyle that we used to live with all the sin that in it that was opposite of the one that with God would live. And he gave us the opportunity to live a life that only the sons of God live. And we are now sons of God. And as a result of that, we ought to live like that in our life because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 17, once again, says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. We are now of God, and everything about our life is supposed to become of God. Now, it doesn't start off that way, but it should eventually get that way, because day by day, as we learn more about who we are, we should become more about who we are and live that out like we're supposed to. Because the more we find out who we are, we'll quit living like we used to. We'll quit, we'll quit living the old life and the lifestyles that we used to do before Jesus Christ did what he did for me and you. But now that we know he's done that for me and you, we allow old things to pass away so that all things can become new. Amen. Because we are now of God. We derive our origin from God. He is the source of our life. He is, our re he, he, is, he is the purpose of our life. He is our identity. We find out who we are in him. Praise God. Because we have to conduct ourselves like we really are in him because we are in him. We are in Christ. So therefore, we are to operate like we are in Christ. That's why he told us be imitators of Christ as dear children and walk in love even as, 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 as Jesus walked in love. We're supposed to live like we are really in him. Why? Because we are in him. We operate within the parameters of the way he operated. We operate within the, in the ways that he operated, which means the way he did it is the way we do it too. That's why it's so good to know who we are as the brand new me and you. Because otherwise, we'll go back to living like we used to, go back to doing what we never should be doing, and instead of stepping into this wonderful life that God has in store for me and you, as the brand new me and you. We go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we've been looking at who we are now as, 
as he is, not aware he is. That's what we've been studying for a little while because we found out it says, behold, all things have become new. That word behold means to gaze at, stare at, look intently upon. And it means East Side Detroit version say, check it out and don't miss this. Well, that's what we've been doing. We've been checking it out so we don't miss this. So we can be able to make sure we live this thing that God wants us to live because he died for us to be able to receive it. He gave it to us to live. Verse 9 begins to start telling us about who we are. Because once again, the Corinthian church had that problem too. Identity crisis. They didn't really know who they were now that they were born again. They knew about the gifts of God and they would have flow in the gifts of God. I mean, the power of God would flow like a mug. But yet they would be tripping in the midst of the church too and acting ways that they weren't supposed to act. So Paul had to come to them and begin to start explaining to them who they are so he could bring order back to the church. And that's what God is doing even now. He's bringing order to his church because his church is becoming increasingly disordered, conducting themselves in ways that they ought not do. He loves everybody. He's a good, good father. And he loves us, love us enough to tell us what to do too. Praise God. So that we can live this thing out like he wants us to do because see, our being saved is just a part of his plan. And he has parts of the plan that need to be fulfilled by that man that's saved. And that's including the ministry of reconciliation which means until we're reconciled to God, changed mutually like we ought to be done and have compounded differences in our life, we can't make a difference in somebody else's life. We have to be the people that he wants us to be to have the full effect of who we ought to be. You can still affect a couple people here and there, but you'll probably infect more people than you affect later because you're not living it like it ought to be lived. So God is coming to his church right now. I know it's uncomfortable for some folk, praise God, because they like the loosey-goosey Christianity, praise God. Yeah, he loves everybody. Good to see you, sis. Praise God. Yeah, he looking good, too. Watch out now. Yeah, he, he love everybody. <laughs> Amen. Good to see you. Anyway, praise God. We, you know, God, let's read the word. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Sharon threw me off. Praise God. <laughs> good to see you. Anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it reads like this. Paul was speaking. He said, for we are laborers together with God. Of course, he was speaking of himself and the other people that was preaching and teaching the, the Corinthian church. He said, we are laborers together, God. We are co-laborers with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. That's who we are. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. We've been working on the husbandry part, praise God, because that's the one that's usually not talked too much about. We found out as God's husbandry, we are God's cultivable. We are God's farm. We are God's cultivable. We are God's farm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As his cultivable, we are a land that is capable of being cultivated so that we can produce the fruit in our lives that God wants us to produce. We are God's farm. Once again, this is not the kind of farm with a lot of livestock walking over it, dropping all kind of livestock pucky all over it, because that's how our life already was. It was full of pucky. Praise God. Well, we step in mess and carry that mess in other people's lives, too. But we're not supposed to be living a life that's got all that mess because now God has purchased me and you. Now that he's purchasing us, he's now cultivating the land, clearing out out of the land everything that was in the land that stops the land from being able to produce what it needs to produce. God wants us to be that land with amber waves of grain growing on it in such a way where things are produced in our life that cause other people to have and sustain life and be able to enhance their life too. That's what's supposed to be coming for me and you. We've been finding that out. Praise God. We found out, once again, we're a land capable of being cultivated, which means just because you got born again don't mean that you've been capable. I mean, you've been cultivated. You just was purchased. That's all. But now after you get purchased, he begins to cultivate you. He starts on the inside on the part that you couldn't do. And he does that one for you. He recreates you back into the image and likeness of God because you are a spirit that lives in a body that possesses a soul. He wants to cause you to become right so that you can live in life. You live your life in control. First part was the part that you couldn't do. That's the changing you spiritually. Second part is the one that needs to be cooperated by you. That's what begins to start changing your thinking and start changing your actions and the way you live your life too. Because that part is just as important as the other part, but that part can't be done until he did what he do. Now that he did what he do, now we're supposed to do what we're supposed to do and be changed that way by changing our thinking so that God wants to clear out all this thinking that we have, all these ways of thinking and doing that's not like him so that it can produce a life that's operating like him so that we can then be able to produce in our life all the days of our life. We found out he chose you to do this. You didn't choose him. He chose you that you may bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. We found out in Galatians chapter 5, the fruit that is the fruit that he wants to manifest in our life is the fruit love. Because he wants love to manifest in the midst of our life. 
which will have various other manifestations in the midst of the life. But yet at the same time, we find out we're not just supposed to love in word only, or we're supposed to love in tongue or learn language. We're supposed to love in deed and in truth, which means there are actions that should demonstrate our love. We started looking at what some of those are. First Corinthians chapter 13, please. We started looking what those are. Because everybody say they love until you find out what love does. Everybody say they love until you find out what love does not do. Praise God. That's when you find out whether the love is really on the inside of me and you. Because we found out just like that white is not, that light is not white light. It just looked like white light, but that's because we don't have the ability to be able to see it in all its spectrums. But when you run it through a prism, it separates it and shows you the various different facets of that light so that you can see all the spectrums of that light. Same thing with love. You don't know what love is till you run it through people. When you start dealing with people, that's when you find out what love really is. The prism is a rock, and some folk are too. And then you run it past people, and you find out what kind of love is really on the inside of you. And the Bible says, hearing will they know that you are of me because you can love the brethren. Yeah. Amen. Not just because you say you love, sing you love, but can you love people like God wants you to do? Because if you can't love people like you ought to, then you won't be able to minister reconciliation to people like you ought to. Because it will repel, repulse people. It will push people away from you so that people won't want to hear a word that you say or the things that, that, that you say God will do. They don't want to hear all that. Because people don't want to know how much you, you, you they, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. They don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And if you don't love, then you demonstrate you don't care. So God, good to see you, man. So God wants to be able to deal with you about that. Praise God. It's reunion night. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said it was going to happen. First Corinthians chapter 13. We've been looking at it, starting with verse 4. We found out charity suffers long. Amen. It, is, it has long suffering to it. Praise God. Whereas it makes a decision at the beginning to be able to make it through to the end. It is long spirited to the point that it's just, it, 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 it make a decision at the beginning to make it through to the end. And then it'll do whatever is necessary to make it through to the end. And it's kind at the same time. We find out we are kind people as, as Christians. We are kind people. Because why is that? Because we, we love level four. We, the rest of the world can do one, two, and three, but they can't do level four. We the only ones can do the agape love. And that agape love gives us the ability to be kind at all times. We're benevolent to people. We look out for people. We, we love people. We'll come through for people. Even when they're hard-headed, crazy people, we'll do it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. We'll do it. Why? Because we love like that. Nobody else love like that. We the only ones love like that. When everybody else has been writing folk off, we keep folk, we keep folk on the books. Praise God. Hallelujah. And keep coming through for them, too. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we do. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's level four. Remember, this is level four. We love level four. This is, this is the top level. This, this, this nosebleed area for folk, that, for folk that don't live like God want them to live. Are you listening to me up in here? Amen. Anyway, we found out we can do this because God has shed his love abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. He put it up in us so he can do it. Last time we got together, we found out that people who operate in love are not only are kind people, but we don't walk around acting all great because of it, too. We ain't pompous. We, ain't, we don't boast and all that kind of stuff. We don't vaunt ourselves. Why is that? Because people who love level four, we don't boast about ourselves. If we're going to boast about anybody, we're going to boast about God. Because God gave us the ability to love like that, because otherwise we would never love like that, so we can't take credit for that. This is God in us that's doing this. This is God in us. And we found out if anything good comes from a man, it's got to be God. If anything good you see in a man, it's got to be God. Same thing for woman, too. Praise God. If anything good comes from a woman, it's got to be God. And if anything that's good about a woman, it's got to be God, because only God is good. And so since that's the case, this good that we do is because of the good that's in me and you as a result of the God that is in me and you and love me and you. Well, he is actually using us as an aura fix to be able to love those people through me and you. It's not me and you doing it. Paul said, it's no longer me that liveth, it's he that liveth in me. And he is the hope of glory. He's the one that's doing that. So we don't get into self-praise and all that kind of stuff. We don't be doing that. And we don't act all ugly. We found that out. Praise God. Last time we got together, we don't act all ugly. We don't, the Bible puts it unseemingly. Unseemingly. The real word is ugly. 
because we don't act ugly because we level four Christians. We love people too much to act ugly. It don't mean that we don't want to sometimes, but we don't do it because we are level four. We operate level four. Just get the CD. Praise God. Hallelujah. We found out we don't offer evil for evil, railing for railing. We don't have an attitude if you don't start none, won't be none. You start it, I'm going to finish it. No, we don't have that. That was, that was before we went level four. Now that we level four, we don't do that no more. We turn the other cheek. That's ours, not theirs, as in turn the other cheek. We, 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 that's, we turn our cheek. Why we know? Because we know God got us. Get the CD. Praise God. I can, I can, I see that you need to get that CD again. Just keep listening and listening. Because some of y'all are like, uh uh. <laughs> I ain't there, Pastor, but you can get there with the CD. Keep listening. Remember, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Because the just shall live by faith. Now, one, today, one of the ways that we don't behave un, ourselves unseemly is found in verse 4 also. Verse 4 says, because remember I said these are all spectrums of that same light, so they blend into one another. It says, charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Oh, I felt, I felt, seek is not on her own. One of the ways that we don't behave ourselves unseemingly is by not being a person who always seeks their own. By being a person who does not always seek their own. Now, a person who loves level four is a person who doesn't seek their own with people. They don't seek their own with other people. In other words, love is not selfish. So we who operate level four, we don't operate selfishly. Now, there's a famous quote that a person by the name of Gladstone once said. He said, selfishness is the greatest curse of the human race. He said, selfishness is the greatest curse of the human race. Now, you might say, well, why would he say that? Because this is the personification of Satan's personality in the midst of a person. Because God is the opposite of selfishness. But Satan is the antichrist. He's the opposite of who God is. So if he can get God's people who are known by their love, which is selfless, to begin to operating selfish, then his personality is in manifestation through the people. His ways of doing things is amongst the people. And according to Gladstone, selfishness is the greatest curse of the human race. Why? Because God ain't in it. No kind of a way. And the worst thing that could ever happen to the human race, to the people that are in this world, is, the, is where God ain't in there. And stop and think about it. God is living in me and you now. And he sent us into a world to be able to be the salt of the earth and to be able to be the example before people and to be able to take God into the midst of the environment. But if we're selfish, then we negate the ability of God to move and we open the door for Satan to move and operate his way. Selfishness is the absolute opposite of level four love, agape love. It is the absolute opposite. They are diametrically opposed to one another. It's the absolute opposite of what level four love is all about, opposite. In fact, there is, therefore, if it doesn't reflect, nor does it, represent level four love in any kind of way. It doesn't reflect or it doesn't represent level four love in any kind of way. And so since God is love, it doesn't reflect God in any kind of way. No kind of way. There's another famous quote that a person said. They said, there is no room for God in him who is full of himself. There is no room for God in him who is full of himself. See, the world is full of it. We full of God. The world don't have no room for God. We full of God. 
And the reason why they can be selfish is because they're full of themselves. We are people that's been delivered from ourselves. So we're not full of ourselves and we're not selfish. See, the love of God is not in a person who is full of themselves. There's no room for God. That's why people who love level four are not full of themselves. We're too full of God and too full of the love of God to be full of ourselves. We are too full of God and too full of the love of God to be full of ourselves. We don't operate that way. See, people are supposed to know we're his because of our lack of selfishness and the absence of our self-seeking ways. They're supposed to know that we're his because of a lack of selfishness. They'll be around you and they say, man, you must be of God. Because I've noticed you're not really about yourself. You're looking out for other people. You have an absence of self-seeking ways. Whereas everybody else is always about what they want, what they want to do. And everything about them is all about them. Even when you sing the song, it's all about you in the middle of a church. They'll be like, man, they knew I was going to be here. Because <laughs> they be thinking it's talking about them. We ain't that way. We're about God. And because we're his, we're not a people where it's always got to be about us. Where it's all about us. It's all about us. See, no, that's not the way we function. Because we're his, it's not all about us, but it's about God. And once it's about God, it's about others. I said it's about God. And once it's about God, it's about others. It's about God. And once it's about God, it's about others. Because as you love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might, the second is like unto it, and then we, you begin to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. If you can't love your neighbor as yourself, the problem isn't with the people, it's with God. That's why all this stuff that people talking about, I'm getting closer and closer to God, I can't tell because you're getting farther and farther away from the people. Amen. Because if you're getting closer and closer to God, you're going to be more and more about God's people. Because that's what God's about. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Stick around. I'll teach you how to tell whether things are real. Amen. Not by how they sound, but by what happens. Because actions speak louder than words. And they're usually more true, too. Romans chapter 12. Verse 9. He's teaching the Roman church. Now, this was important because, see, the when he was talking to the Roman church, he was dealing with a people who were, had all people around them. They had all the people around them. And see, the Roman society, this is interesting, the Roman society, even though it had a myriad of people in the midst of the society, there was technically an unofficial caste system that existed in the midst of their society too. Because remember, there was the Romans who were the top dogs, and then there was everybody that they conquered that they allowed to be involved in their society. You could be involved, but, you could, but, but, but there was a difference that was always made with people. There was a difference that was always made in, with people. Slavery was legal to them, praise God, whereas they would have slaves. That's why when we read the book of Philemon, we see where a slave owner, where Paul wrote to a slave owner about a slave and told the slave, go back and be a slave. Amen. Not that he agreed with slavery, but he was dealing with how to conduct yourself in the midst of that society. Does that make sense to anybody up in here? And so now he's talking to this, these Romans, praise God, who are new to Christianity. And, he, and, and so therefore they have a separatism between themselves and other people and, and how they look down their nose at, at all people who are not them. He said in verse, starting with verse 9, Romans chapter 12, he said, let love be without dissemination. No, he said, notice he said let, which means you got to allow this to happen. You have to choose to do this because you're not going to naturally do this. Let love be without dissimulation. That word dissimulation is talking about fakeness. Don't be fake in your love. Abhor that which is good and cleave to that. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with, brother in, with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. In honor, 
preferring one another. Now, this was the opposite of their mentality. Because with us, honor prefers me. With most people, honor prefers us. But he was teaching them, no, if you want to operate in honor, prefer other people. Prefer other people. That word prefer right there means show deference. Show deference. The word deference means respectful submission or yielding to the judgment, opinion, will, etc., etc., of another. Respectful submission of yielding to the judgment of another, opinion of another, will of another. See, you can't do this without love. It can't be done without love. You don't believe me? Ask, ask the people that's running for office. Who as quiet as is kept, have slight differences between them. Not major differences, slight differences between them. But you can't tell because each one of them wants the office so badly that they'll lie, cheat, defame on one another, backbite, jam one another. They, do the, they don't prefer one another in any kind of a way. They don't defer to one another on anything. Never will they say, that's a good thing that you just said. Now, I might add this, as in, let me show you the difference in my opinion, my nuance. No, you wrong. And, you're, and you ain't even a good Christian. You're not a, you're not a good person. You're, you're, you're little Marco, you know, stuff like that, you know. Whereas we, 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 we're speaking against people and, do, and, and dogging people. See, level four Christians don't operate that way. We can have a difference between the two of us and it not show itself in dishonor. We have a way to still be able to honor people even when we don't even necessarily agree with them. We have a way to do things. We are respectful people. Amen. We respect other people. Amen. Now, to respect other people don't mean I got to agree with you, but I still respect you. Amen. Like if, we, if, if, an, if, for example, if a Democrat is rubber, running against a Republican, neither one is supposed to attack the other person's love for the country because they both love the country. They just have a different way of doing things. That's all. Does that make sense? Now, one may be better than another. One may be right in one area and wrong in another and vice versa. Praise God. You know, because it's quiet as kept nowadays. You got to choose the best of both evils. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing this thing right. But at the same time, we still respect one another. Does that make sense? We defer to one another. Read again, verse 10. Verse 10 says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, someone who seeks their own is someone who demands that things be the way that they think they should be. They demand that things be the way that they think should be all the time without compromise. There is no deference to anybody about anything. Now, I got to put a pause button right here. Now, I'm not talking about when we're dealing with things that's talking about like Christianity in terms of what God's word said we're supposed to do. You are not supposed to compromise that to nobody. But you can still be respectful about it. You can still be honorable about it. You just don't back up on it. Are you listening to me up in here? Because that's not seeking your own. That's seeking his own. And we just living it out. Does that make sense? So I'm not talking about that. I ain't talking about being a compromising Christian so that you can get along with folk. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where's you, it's always got to be about you and what you want. There ain't no deference in that. Ain't no preferring others over ourselves, please. Prefer other over ourselves, please. I for be like, man, please. That's because self-seeking demands its own ways. Self-seeking demands its own ways. Forget somebody else getting what they want. Mm -mm. Others can get what they want as long as it lines up with the self-seeking person what they want. If it lines up what they want, then you can get what you want. But if it don't line with what I want, you ain't going to get what you want. Because it's always got to be about them, the self-seeking person. See, there's another famous quote that a person by the name of Hunt said. Hunt said, the same person who can deny others everything are famous for refusing themselves nothing. 
The same person who denies others everything is famous for, for refusing themselves nothing. See, a lot of times, you know, these same people, although they won't let you get your way, it's always got to be their way. We're not like that. 